Hi there guys, my name is Zach and welcome to my channel. Amongst other things, I'm a reenactor and a jouster and you might have recently seen my video on the Battle of Bosworth reenactment. Um, while I was there, I had a little bit of a chat with Louise of Noisy Little Goblin, which you can see um, in my video on the event, uh, which you can find a link to in the description down below. But um, we also had a little chat about something that I noticed inside her tent. Now, Louise camps in a pavilion, as do I. Um, we've These are very classical tents that you think of when you think about the medieval period, particularly the late 15th century kind of full plate armor, that sort of thing. That's the period that I reenact. Um, these tents have a very iconic shape with the triangular roof and the straight down sides. We've got a couple of examples that um, that still exist. One of them is the Basel tent, um, but it's hard to know exactly how they were constructed. One of the constructions that I have based on the Basel, um, and I've probably mispronounced that, I'm sorry. Those of you who like correct pronunciations, I'm really sorry. Um, but one of the uh, constructions is to create that roof just using guys pulling it out. However, there are a couple of other constructions that some people use. Uh, one of them is to have poles to create kind of an umbrella and instead of pulling out the roof, to push it out using poles. Now, there's a problem that some people experience with that and that's those poles coming out because obviously the walls um, and the roof are fabric and they blow in the wind and uh, that can loosen them. But I noticed that Louise had a particular interesting construction around it, but I'll let her explain it to you. So this is the inside of this tent. What is going on here? <laughs> um, because these can sometimes be pulled by the weight of the awning, especially if it's windy, the poles fall out, they hit yeah. you in the head, that's quite a bit. Um, you can pin them in, but the problem with that is if the tent ever comes down, it can break the spokes. Yeah. This is a slightly sneakier way, so they're roped um, to each other. So yeah. if one does pull out and drop out, the rope and the other spokes hold it up, so you can easily pop it back in, but it also means that you don't get hit in the head, they don't fly yeah. down, and it just it just hangs there until you can put them back in. So, so it's a sort of health and safety That's feature. great, because that is, that is a problem that I have experienced yes. myself. <laughs> This is not a solution that I have seen, so that, that's really lovely. Thank it's a you. very, very simple idea and it takes yeah. five minutes to put in. Great. Hi guys, Future Zach here. Uh, Louise just wanted me to let you know that it was Joe Martin of the Gloucesters who uh, showed her how to do this. She just wanted to give credit where credit was due and as it's a great idea, that's definitely necessary. I hope that short little clip was useful for you. I actually saw some people having a problem with this at Tewkesbury. So when I noticed it at Bosworth, I just thought, wow, that's really useful. I'm sure other people will be interested in that as well. If you'd like to watch more videos about tents and the camping side of our reenacting, then do leave a comment down below because um, I've got loads of different types of tents. My family all reenact. So we've got loads of different types that we I could um, show you and talk you through. If that's something that would interest you, leave a comment down below um, and leave a like on this video. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. Please do share this video with others. Um, hopefully we'll stop some more people getting hit in the head with uh, uh, poles coming out of their pavilion. So, uh, um, yeah, see you soon, guys. Thank you very much.